what is good youtube welcome back to a brand new video so today we're going to be doing the number two overall pick and that of course being chet holmgren yesterday we did the paulo boncaro orlando magic rebuild so today of course we're here doing our chet holmgren oklahoma city thunder rebuild after he went number two overall before we get into today's video though guys if you can really quickly drop a like and of course also subscribe if you're new around here it'd be greatly appreciated we're almost at 24,000 subs and the late the support lately has been just freaking amazing so I can't thank you guys enough, man. You guys bless me so much. So appreciate every single one of you. I am wearing my uh, Paul George jersey today, so I thought it would fit the theme. I'm not a Thunder fan or anything like that. I, I do I do like the Thunder. It's not like the Thunder my favorite team. I just have a couple jerseys. I have a Russell Westbrook jersey, and I also have a uh, Paul George jersey. Kind of funny because neither one of them are on the team. But I've not been to an uh, Oklahoma City Thunder game since they traded those two. I need to go see Shea Gills Alexander in action, especially with home grid. So maybe... I'll go to an Oklahoma City Thunder game this year. But regardless, we have Shea. Of course, they drafted Chet Holmgren. They did a couple of other things as well, we got to mention. So obviously, they traded for Ujman Dang. Traded with the Knicks, get Ujman Dang. So he should be a huge part of what we do here as well. And then they have Pokoshevsky still. And they also drafted Jalen Williams. And they also drafted Jalen Williams. So Jalen Williams in the second round. And then Jalen Williams was uh, their 12th overall pick. So let's get to it, shall we? I mean, the Thunder, of course, have all the draft capital in the world. And they're just continuing to rebuild the team. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing, man. We're going to continue to try to stay patient. Uh, I'm not going to go crazy today. I don't think that's not the plan. I kind of want to just continue to build through the draft until we can't, I guess, if that makes sense. Like, if we are just at a point where things need to be fixed, then we will do that. But qualifying offers, Lenny Waters, sure, we'll go ahead and uh, extend the qualifying offer. Then free agency. So obviously, I could come out here and sign bradley beal or zach levine they always sign zach levine in my nba but honestly man i don't think i'm gonna do that i guess there's one person we could try to get i mean no nah, nah, no i'm not gonna do that i was about to say we could go after deandre and of course he would fit the timeline of the team but i might just roll with what we got to be honest with you i i don't you know oklahoma city is not a huge free agency destination anyway to begin with so I kind of just roll with what we got maybe we make a couple trades here i mean like jermichael green isn't gonna be here long term so I wonder, I mean, Chelm Grant will probably start him at the center. I imagine he will start at the center for them. And you'll have like Pokoshevsky out there uh, starting next to him. Or depending on Ujman, I don't know what the Thunder starting five will essentially look like, but I feel like I know for the most part. So Shane Josh Giddy, of course, is the backcourt, which we're totally okay with that. And then Lou Dort for now is the small forward. He he has been in some trade rumors. Kenner H. Williams as well has been in some trade rumors. But with uh, Ujman Dang here, I kind of want to make him like the backup small forward. So... I might trade Kenrich Williams, to be honest with you, this offseason. Then you have Baisley and Pokoshevsky. And Jabaco Green is not going to be a huge part of the rotation whatsoever. And then Derek Favors won't either. So we kind of have our rotation. Maybe a couple trades I want to make just to free up some minutes. But other than that, uh, we're pretty solid. And we have a really nice young core that I kind of just want to see what they do in season number one. So I'm trading Kenrich Williams over to the Sacramento Kings for a couple of second round picks. Just for, you know, just to get some value out of him. He's on a one-year deal. The Kings could use a guy like him. So that just frees up minutes essentially for Ujman Dang. I'm going to keep Lou Dort for now. Maybe in the offseason we sign and trade him and just give Ujman Dang. Or what we could do is we could technically probably move Ujman Dang more to the power forward spot. And then you could have like an Ujman Dang Chet Holmgren front court, which actually might be the better idea. So Ujman Dang does not go down. So what we're going to do is we are going to play him at power forward, I think. So him and Pokoshevsky. We'll probably run it down at power forward and then center or yeah, power forward, I should say. Pogoshevsky and him and then Ujman Dang and then Chet Holmgren can maybe be our front core. So Ujman Dang will probably be the starter. Like I said, Jermichael Green's not going to start. So I think that's going to be it though. I don't, th I think that's literally the only move I wanted to make. Again, this team has just been kind of building through the draft. So I'll stay the route for them. Uh, Sam Presti's been doing an amazing job, of course, ever since they did have to trade Russell Westbrook and Paul George all when that whole thing went down. And then obviously Kawhi went to the Clippers around that time, but Regardless, I kind of want to see the rotation, kind of kind of want to see what things look like after it's all put together. So if we take a real quick look uh, at it all together, Chet Holmgren, Shea Gilles Alexander, Josh Giddy is what your starting five comes out with. So Shea, Shea Gilles Alexander, Josh Giddy, Lou Dort, they want to start Jermichael Green. I just can't see that personally. Chet Holmgren, Trey Mann off the bench, Isaiah Roby, Pokoshevsky. Theo Baisley, and then we don't even have Usman Dang in the uh, in the rotation, which I just don't agree with because, I mean, we trade three first round picks to get them right, so I mean they're heavily protected first round picks. So, uh, do I just trade Jermichael Green here as well to begin? I mean, I should have just done it in the offseason to be honest with you. Probably could give me a couple seconds as well, or maybe even a protected first. 
Like Cleveland's offered me a protected lottery first round pick for uh, Jermichael Green services. Sure, well, we can do that. I don't even have to. Well, I guess if I have to take RJ, I will. So sure, why not? We'll go ahead and do this trade. We give him a second. We get a uh, first round pick for Jermichael Green. That should free up the power four minutes. So Pogoshevsky, they still want to put him as a starter. Okay, I guess I'm not totally opposed to that. So maybe put Ujman Dang over Baisley. Uh, and then that's how we roll this year. So that's probably what we'll do. So we'll have this starting five, Shea, Josh, Giddy, Lou, Dort, Pokoshevsky, and Shea Holmgren, and then Trey Mann, Isaiah Roby, Theo, and then Ujman Dang to roll things out for now. Ujman Dang might eventually take over that starting power forward spot. But for now, the shot tendencies look like this. Uh, I think they look fine. I might boost up Josh Giddy's a little bit just because I do want to see him do good. And then probably will keep it like that so we're gonna go ahead and simulate to the end of this first season after the thunder had uh quite a few draft picks what is this thunder team gonna do at least here in 2k and what's it gonna look like going forward so at the end of the season luka Doncic wins mvp chet holmgren is your rookie of the year someone yesterday told me i look like a deflated luka Doncic. i thought that was hilarious but six man goes to ben simmons jonathan eyes defensive player on the magic john morant most improved again and steve kerr coach of the year so here's your nba first team uh, all NBA second team. I imagine we don't have anybody from the Thunder representing, of course, but all NBA, all defensive first team, all defensive second team. And then here's our all rookie team. Of course, Chad Holmgren got rookie of the year, so he didn't make uh, all rookie first team, which is nice. And then Ujman Dang also got all rookie second team, only playing 15 minutes a night. So I definitely like the ceiling uh, with Ujman Dang going forward. But regardless, we are the six seed out West. We avoided the playing tournament and actually made the playoffs this year, which is really nice to see. So Shea Gills Alexander with 24 points per game makes sense why we were where we're at because he's been really good. Chet Holmgren with 16 and 11 and almost three blocks per game, which is what exactly Chet Holmgren, uh, you know, what people say about him that he could be really good defensively, uh, can space the floor, and he shot 38%. So, yeah, if he can do that in real life, the Thunder will have a really good player in their hands. Trey Mann, 15 off the bench. Lou Dort averaged 14 as well. 13 and a half from Josh Giddy, and then 11 from Pokoshevsky, 10. Uh, Theo with eight and then seven from Ujman Dang off the bench. So uh, we'll kind of figure out what we want to do going forward after this. I don't think we'll win a championship this year, but I guess you never really know. It is 2K. Anything is possible. But we get the Timberwolves in round one who have D'Lo still, Anthony Edwards, Malik Beasley. I still wonder if D'Lo will get traded this offseason and when will it happen. But regardless, so many occur around against Minnesota and we are going to take them to seven. But we end up losing, but that's okay because this is our first year making the playoffs with Shea Gilgis the, in the Shea Gilgis Alexander era. So I'm so okay with that. We can continue to build off this in the offseason. And who knows, it might even have some more draft picks. So probably will actually. So I don't even know why I'm, I'm worried about anything crazy this offseason or having to worry about getting better because the draft capital here is probably going to save me. So to so the draft lottery, go. We are projected number eight and number 10 okay and we're projected i don't know if we're projected anything else but we'll go ahead and watch this lottery since we do have two lottery picks maybe we get lucky and get into the top four i mean i know when i've done rebuilds i've seen the thunder be like number one and number two in the past so hey if that happens you know your boy ain't complaining imagine if we did get something like that though where the thunder are number one and number two in real life that'd be kind of crazy but so far it's the knicks and the nuggets at 14 and 13 and then we got the wizards at 12. no surprises thus far I can't even remember what we were projected at, but I'm just really hoping we find a way to get in the top four because we could find a way to get like Scooter Henderson, maybe something like that. I mean, we're going to get a good quality player regardless to add to this roster. So Miami Heat number 10, which actually that goes to the Jazz. And that means the Heat have leapfrogged in the top four. Okay, so the Heat went up to the top four. We're projected number nine, and we do it stay at number nine. Is that our own pick? It is from the Clippers. So back-to-back -back lottery picks for us uh from the clippers which is nice sacramento kings number eight okay and wait do we even have another pick? i think it said we were projected miami's miami's pick but that pick might be lottery protected i might just skip this then and yeah so i'm assuming that he pick was lottery protected or something or top protected whatever it may be we only have the ninth pick uh, in this draft which is fine that's still a good quality role player we could add i'm sure we have another pick somewhere else right nope maybe not Maybe not. Maybe we only have the ninth pick. Okay. Well, we did trade them like uh, we did. Then they did trade the Knicks like what was it like five pick or three picks on draft night. So maybe that's where some of the picks have gone. But I just plan on bringing back the same guy. I mean, he's the head coach. So I don't see why they would fire him. So I'll just keep him around. I don't plan on making a big move there. We'll get a couple of guys to add to this coaching staff. And then, of course, we'll make some moves on draft night. Maybe make a trade. If not, 
just simply draft with the ninth overall pick so here we are jumping into the nba draft of course we have the ninth overall pick here so honestly i think the thing we need the most is a small forward and we have both the top okay so we have plenty of options we have do both the thompsons on the board then we also have Amani Bates, who obviously has kind of fallen off a little bit because I don't think he was very good at Memphis this last year. Now I think he's transferring, if I'm not mistaken, but I don't know a ton about college, so I'm not going to sit here and act like I know what's completely going on. But I feel like I want one of the Thompson guys because they're both really good coming out of college or coming out of 2K at least. So not sure which one is better, 6A and 6A. I mean, they both look like the same person almost. So I think I was going to take Amon Thompson here and add him to my small forward core. And then in my second, I have a couple of second rounders, it looks like. So we have uh, Julian Strother here as well. I'll go ahead and take him. And I think I'll just let the CPU take the rest. So we got a 77 overall immediately. Is the other Thompson better? I don't know if they're the same or if one's better. Maybe I messed up. No, I guess I got the better one. And then Imani Bates. Yes, could have been a guy we could have taken, but I'm cool with one of the Thompsons being like a really good player for us going forward. And then we'll uh, go ahead and sign both, uh, the, both of these guys in the second round. Player options, uh, Robinson Earl. Declining doesn't make much sense to me, so I'm just going to go ahead and accept it. He is 22 years old. No reason to just decline him. There's Baisley. We low-key might let walk this offseason. I'm not sure how much Thunder fans like him, but I do know I have a lot. Of well, maybe he... I mean, we have Pokoshevsky and Ujman Dang. That's why I'm kind of wondering if I should just let him go, but maybe we don't. So, Thompson, Wiggins, Jalen Williams, Julian Strother. So, Thompson will probably start at the small four spot now. Lou Dort is a free agent, so I'm not sure. I might just let Lou Dort go. Or I might sign and trade him, I should say. So it's Josh Giddy, Trey Man. I like that a lot. Theo was good. Uh, so Thompson, adding Thompson to this was nice, but he's a D plus three point uh, shooter, which isn't great, but uh, it'll work out in 2K. It does not matter. Then Chet Holmgren and Robinson Earl. So I think uh, the only thing I really want to do is probably sign and trade Lou Dort this offseason. I think we're at the point where, unless if I just kept Lou Dort, but. I mean, we have so many guys that maybe it just makes sense to just sign and trade him now and get a couple first round picks if possible. So, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sign and trade Lou Dort because we have so many guys on rookie contracts. And I think, you know, not that Lou Dort's expensive, but there's just not enough minutes to go around, to be honest with you. So the Phoenix Suns are off me two first round picks for Lou Dort. We're going to go ahead and make that trade. I wanted to get incredible value out of Lou Dort because I know how much Thunder fans love Lou Dort. So I do feel bad for trading him away. But at the end of the day... I just don't have a lot of minutes and I have a lot of young guys and uh, I'm just kind of deciding who I want to go with going forward. Again, I do love Lou Dort a lot and I, I you know, I wanted him on my Blazers at one point, but uh, we're just going to trade him for a couple first round picks this offseason. Again, we're not going to get any crazy in free agency. I just kind of want to see the player progression just continue to kind of take us where we want to be. So Chet Holmgren, Josh Gideon, Shea are all going up. Trey Mann is up to an 80 overall. Pokoshevsky is up to an 80. Theo uh, is up to an 80. Uh, Ujman Deng, Deng is up to an 80. Baisley came back on his qualifying offer, which is fine. And you got Aaron Wiggins, uh, Thompson as well, also went down to a 76 technically because he was literally a 77 uh, just a second ago. Uh, but maybe if uh, things don't go well this offseason or this in these playoffs, this playoff run, if we do make the playoffs, maybe we make like a trade for like a really good small forward or something since we just got rid of Lou Dort. And we don't know how good Thompson's going to be. But they do want to start Ujman Dang this year, which I'm okay with. So it's going to be Shea, Josh Giddy, Eamon Thompson, Ujman Dang, Chell Holmgren as our front court, which we kind of figured would get, was going to be that uh, eventually. And then Trey Mann, Pokoshevsky, Theo, and Baisley is the bench. So honestly, really solid rotation. Proficiency leads us uh, to a three and a half balance. Uh, can we be four star anywhere? No. So we'll probably just leave it at balance and we'll run it again. So let's go ahead and simulate this season and uh, let's even make the playoffs again. Last year we were the sixth seed. Maybe it could be even higher this year with a little bit of progression behind us. So at the end of the season, Jason Tatum wins MVP this time around. Victor on the Bulls wins Rookie of the Year. Simmons, six-man Giannis defensive player. Ujman Dang won most improved player, which actually that's really cool to see. So we know we have something in Ujman Dang and Chet Holmgren as our front court going forward. Especially after he wins most improved player, you just love to see it. So uh, we are in the plan tournament. So obviously we went from the 6th seed to the 10th seed. Not very good. Uh, so I think what we should be looking to do this offseason is 100% trade for like a good small four that fits this roster. So I think that's what we're going to do this offseason. Or if a draft pick is presented to us, that's really high. Maybe we just do, you know, go with that route. But 21 from Shea, 19 from Holmgren, 15 from Josh Giddy, 13 from Trey Mann, Usman Dang with 13, and Pokoshevsky with 10. Uh, 10 from Eamon Thompson, Amon Thompson, I reset, Theo 8, and then Baisley with 7. Jalen Williams with one. So let's go ahead and see if we get into the playoffs. Simulating through game against the Spurs. 
and we end up losing. So we drop out of the playoffs after being in the playoffs last year. So I don't want to see that happen again. I want to be consistent and I want to continue to make the playoffs. So we got the Golden State Warriors going on to win the championship over the Celtics. So if finals rematch still goes to the Warriors in six. So pretty much the same last time, same as last time, but draft lottery time once again. We might be projected some height. Whoa, baby. Five, dude. Literally all. There's four. That's literally just insane. Are, are we looking at the same thing? We got four Thunder picks potentially in the top five. Are you serious right now? We got to watch this whole lottery. We have to. I don't know how the protections on all of them though. So maybe we do it. If we have like one through five or something crazy like that, I don't even know what to do, bro. That's just crazy. The Pelicans have uh, number 13 from the Bucks. Okay. Number 12. Let's see uh, what we got at number 12. And that's going to be uh, the Pacers. Okay, man. This is such a crazy like. So we could potentially have like four top seven picks that's insane charlotte Hornets get 11 so so far our name has not been has been drawn in and our our pick was obviously there like five times so 76 won the 10th overall pick okay and number nine this is the knicks so again our name is not shown yet and that is the knicks so we are literally in the top eight i don't know how many times but it's going to be awesome here we go thunder at number eight and that is going to be Number eight. Honestly, that could have been like a different Thunder pick. And then like we it could have said, hey, we jumped into the top four. So we have number eight. This is going to be Knicks at number seven. And that is going to go to us. So we have the seventh overall pick via the Miami Heat. So that means we have eight and seven. And then the Pelicans. Let's see. Is this them? Yes. Pelicans got the sixth overall pick. All right. And number five, we have us again. And that is going to be us. So we have the fifth. The seventh and the eighth pick so far. And that's from the Clippers. Holy moly. Here we go again. Do we literally get this pick as well? We have the fourth over. What do I even do with all these picks? That's from the Phoenix Suns. We literally got, I think, last year from the Lou Dort trade. Maybe not. Maybe it was a, a different trade. The Jazz. That's the Knicks pick. And number three from the Washington Wizards. Wow. And then number two from the Jazz. I don't know if any of these picks are ours. That's the Knicks. Wow. The Knicks have back-to-back -back as well. Wait, does that mean we have the number one overall pick? No, it's the Jazz. Really? Wow. Okay, so we have four, five, seven, and eight. The Knicks have two and three, and the Jazz have number one. What a crazy lottery that was. Holy moly. So just like that, we have four, five, seven, and eight. And then we have 23 on top of that. This, the, I don't even know what to do with all these picks. The Knicks have two and three. Shout out to the Knicks. I don't, I don't even wait who's good in this draft anyway i gotta i gotta recap refresh myself so uh mikey williams though this is like the mikey williams draft isn't it Bronny james Jalen lewis kwame evans i guess would be solid if we got him but why do i want to make like a crazy trade with all this draft capital man like i i don't know like i just kind of want to make a crazy trade it's just so overwhelming having this many picks i don't want to draft four guys and try to find minutes for them that's insane as, which is why I don't understand what Bill uh, Sam Presti is going to do. But hey, that's why Sam Presti is the GM and I'm not. So that, right, obviously. But you know what? Regardless, I'm going to try to do something crazy if I can. We have literally four top 10 picks. No way I can't find something to do with them, right? So I'm looking around the league right now to see who is available for us to trade. And I immediately have... Oh, we could get Luka Doncic on this team as well. That'd be kind of crazy. We do have four picks to do it. But then, I don't know, because we already have two guards. So that's not really what I want to do. And I don't know why the Mavericks would ever trade Luka Doncic, to be honest with you. So, But there is somebody I do have in mind, and I think it could make some sense right now, considering they have number two and three. Maybe, just maybe, they'd be fine with moving on from R.J. Barrett. So the New York Knicks could trade me R.J. Barrett, and then they could have, like, literally four lottery picks if we, you know, play our cards right. So let's see what I can offer them to get R.J. Barrett off their hands. So honestly, we can offer uh, quite a bit of things. So I'm willing to offer Eamon Thompson who I just drafted to be honest with you if to make this work because RJ Bear obviously would immediately take over that small forward spot and then I'll give you probably like seven and eight if you wanted to so Thompson seven and eight for RJ let's see if they'd accept that they agree okay we get we get RJ Barrett so just like that we have RJ Barrett added to this Oklahoma City Thunder core so he fits a timeline right next to Shea Josh Gideon. I've never traded for RJ Barrett when I used the Thunder. I was looking at like Donovan Mitchell and De'Aaron Fox, but I do that every time. So I think RJ Barrett is a nice change up here. And I was also kind of looking at Giannis Loki. I'm like, wait, with this many picks, can I get, can I get Giannis? It would be kind of cool though to try for like 
Luca as well, since they are selling and he's not untouchable right now. But I don't know, man. This was, I thought that would be a little too crazy for me to do. But regardless, uh, we're going to get straight. Well, we're going to actually jump in this draft because we still have um, some guys we can draft here. So, I mean, obviously, wherever we draft, it, I mean, it's not going to matter. So, let's go to four and five, shall we? So, we got Mikey Williams on the board. We got Jalen Lewis. I mean, literally, we could come away really nicely. So, I'm going to draft Jalen Lewis with this first pick. And then we're in, uh, we have literally the next pick. So four, we get Jalen Lewis. And then at number five, I guess I got to take Mikey Williams or Elijah Fisher. Um, I don't know which one is better playmaking wise. I guess it doesn't show me because uh, we could use a backup point guard, Robert Dillingham as well. Uh, I feel like Mikey Williams or Elijah Fisher is going to be too much, but I guess I'll just take Mikey Williams. Mikey Williams, welcome to the Thunder. So we got Mikey Williams, who is an 83 overall. We also got Jalen Lewis. So, I mean, yeah, this team is crazy, literally. So, all right, player options, Josh Giddy. I'm going to decline uh, Jerry Robinson Earl since we just drafted a backup center, essentially. And then qualifying offers, Pokoshevsky. If he wants to come back, I'm more than okay with that. And then uh, other than that, we got to look at the team now. So, looking at the team currently right now, it's going to be Shea and then uh, Trey Mann and Mikey Williams. So, which one is the better playmaker out of them? Because they're going to move to back, uh, point guard. So, it's going to be Trey Mann, it looks like. Or, I mean, either one of them, really. Mikey Williams goes down at point guard, but I will probably play him at the backup point guard role. So, it'll be Mikey Williams playing backup point guard. You have Trey Mann as the backup shooting guard. RJ Barrett and Jalen Williams will probably play the small forward spot. And we'll have Ujmanang and then Jalen Lewis, uh, Chow Holmgren. So, really, the only guy I want back out of free agency is Pokoshevsky. I don't want the other guys, really. So, Theo, Baisley, Robinson, Earl. I don't really want any of them back. So, I'm going to renounce all of those guys uh, since we do have kind of a log jam as it is already with what we got. But I do want Pokoshevsky back. So, uh, Alexej Pokoshevsky, uh, four years, 14 million. I'm going to go ahead and renounce him on accident, but I did offer him. I should still be able to get him. Just kidding. That would take me over the salary cap. So, 2K made me renounce him, which is quite annoying. But maybe we already have somebody who could play some minutes. Maybe we slide. I don't know. That's kind of annoying, but I'm sure we can find someone to play those other minutes. So, Whatever, I guess we'd lose Pokoshevsky in free agency, even though I didn't want to do that. That's fine. Let's just go to player progression, and uh, let's see how good things are. So player progression, we have Shea up to a 92, Shea Holmgren up to an 88, RJ's up to an 88, 86, Mike Williams is down to an 81, Trey Mann, Ujman Dang's up to a 79. So yeah, I mean, I honestly think after those moves, we should be in the playoffs. A big three of RJ, jo or big four, technically, RJ Barrett, Josh Giddy. Shea and Chet Holmgren. I mean, how does that not get into the playoffs, man? That's what I'm wondering. So let's go take a real quick look at the rotation all together. See what it's looking like. So rotation all together. Diamond rotation. Shea, Josh Giddy, RJ Barrett, Usman Dang, Chet Holmgren, Mikey Williams, Trey Mann, Jalen Lewis, and Julian or Jalen Williams. So yeah, I mean, to me, it's looking really good. Proficiency is literally a four and a half system. I don't see how this team isn't a top contender out West with RJ Barrett added here. Let's go make the playoffs and let's go win a championship potentially here for Oklahoma City. So at the end of the season, Luka Doncic, despite being on the trade block last year, well, I guess not being untouchable, I should say, one's, uh, wins MVP. DJ Wagner, Rookie of the Year on the Utah Jazz. Simmons, six man. Giannis, defensive player. Jose Alvarado, most improved. Willie Green, Coach of the Year. Dylan Shaw is your executive. That's not me. I don't understand it. We are the first seed out West. Paulo Boncaro makes an All-NBA first team. I guess I haven't been paying attention to see if Holmgren's making it, and he did. I don't know if he's been making it. Maybe I should have looked. Let's see. Doesn't it tell you here somewhere award history? Uh, third All-NBA. Okay, then second team All-Defense, and then All-Star 2025 Rookie of the Year, and then first team All-Rookie. So I guess this is his first time making an All-NBA team. So shout out to Joe Holmgren. And Jabari makes it as well for the Houston Rockets. All right, so we are the first in the Western Conference after all the moves we made last year. So obviously... We are looking to be in uh, a championship contention here. So 19 points from Chad Holmgren, 17 from Shea, 17 from RJ Barrett. Literally no one averaged 20 points per game because there's just so many good players here. Michael Williams off the bench averaged 16 as well. So I don't see how we lose. Usman Dang's averaging 11, 11 from Trey Mann. Yeah, this team is just kind of stacked, bro. Now we get to play the Spurs in round one. So the Spurs have Simons and Clay. I don't know how the, I don't know how my Blazers let Simons go like that, but they need to fix it ASAP. And then this is our roster. So hopefully beat the Spurs. Hopefully we don't get eighth seated like last video. And bro, oh, please, come on, man. Beat them in six. There we go. Out of the first round, we do not get eighth seated. Now we get a Jabari Smith versus uh, Chihomgren matchup. 
And for some reason, this file has Jabari at small forward. I really need to fix that. I keep telling myself to fix that. But they have Siakam. They still have Kevin Porter Jr. and Jalen Green. They, I assume they still have Ty Ty Washington somewhere. Doesn't look like it, actually. So Washington is no longer on the team, which is kind of crazy. But they do have like Reddish and Christopher and Derek Lively. So this could be a back and forth series. Game one. We're down one to zero. Start things off. All I know is I didn't come this far just to lose. So game two, we're down two to zero. Can we even it up, please? No, we're down three to one to the Houston Rockets, bro. I feel like we're such a better team. And I mean, the Rockets, they, they have a good team as well, but I don't think we should be losing to them is my thing. And we're going to, it looks like. So maybe a championship this year is not in the cards for us, which is rather unfortunate because I thought for sure it would be. And instead we get upset by a fourth seeded Houston Rockets squad. As we have the Rockets going all the way to win a championship. So I guess we lost to the team that ended up winning it all and going to win a championship. Okay, I'm going to run it back one more year, though, because why not? I mean, this team is only going to get better. So, bro. I, what do I even do with all these picks, man? What do I even do? We have the number one overall pick. I don't even know who's good at this point. This is getting overwhelming. I don't know what Sam Presti does with all these picks, but... I'm getting overwhelmed with all these picks. I don't even know what to do with them. Big man coach. I'll side Tyron low real quick. And wow. Okay. Well, I mean, we have the number one overall pick. I mean, I guess I got a draft, don't I? So who, who the hell do I even get? I don't even know. So VJ Miller, Derek Queen. I have no idea who's good. Uh, Tariq Wash, uh, Watson, Cunningham. I guess we let Pokoshevsky. I don't know who's good, man. I don't even care at this point. That was probably a bad pick. He's a 78 overall. I have no idea who any of these guys are. We got literally freaking so many good players coming into the team. And there's just not going to be enough minutes to go around. Uh, qualifying offers, Josh Giddy uh, and Trey Mann are two guys I definitely want back on the team. Uh, this is getting a little overwhelming. Can we sign Giannis right now? No, we can't. Okay. So Josh Giddy and Trey Mann are two guys I definitely want back. And if everyone else comes back, that's fine. We're running it back one more year, essentially. So Josh Giddy, I'll give you your contract. I mean, we're going to pay you eventually anyway. So. If Trey Mann just wants to come back as qualifying offer, that's fine. I think I'm going to do this one more season because if we have a number, another number one overall pick, I'm just going to literally just have an aneurysm, I guess. I, I don't know what else to do, man. Player progression. Uh, we got Shea going down for one. Shelton going up to a 92. And everyone's just kind of progressing for the most part. Mikey Williams went up to an 86. I am at, bro, they're probably going to try to start Mikey Williams over Shea this last year, aren't they? So let's auto generate the rookies. I'm not running it back another year. I mean, I cannot see another top five draft pick and be like where what are we gonna even put them so everyone shea josh giddy rj bear uzman dang chelm grin mikey williams trey man jalen lewis and jalen williams so yeah i think it's safe to say boys i mean what kind of team do you have when the, your number one overall pick you just drafted is not even in the rotation that's that's how things are right now so let's go ahead and sum it to the end of this last season let's try to go win a championship this time and not get upset in the uh, in the second round so in this potential last season chet holmgren wins mvp of the league you love to see that so obviously uh mark also wins coach of the year and then the guy i think we traded away to the knicks wins most improved players so shout out to him but obviously we're trying to win a championship this year and this is the last season i don't know why i said potential last season this is definitely the last season i cannot go forward they got jason tatum on the jazz they don't have Donovan Mitchell anymore, though. And then Rudy Gobert is down to an 82 overall. So they do have DJ Wagner, but similar current round against Utah. Bro, if we get AFC to buy the Jazz, I'm out. Okay, so we 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 beat them in seven. That was literally way too close for comfort. But the Nuggets still have uh, Nikola Jokic, MPJ, Jamal Murray, Christian Brown. And then uh, they have Keontae George, Garuba, Jericho Sims, and Watson. Similar current round against Denver. And we are going to make it to the Western Conference Finals for the first time in this video. But now we get the team that actually eliminated us last year. Now they have Jonathan Isaac. They're up one to zero. Maybe the Rockets just own our franchise, bro. The Rockets just own us, I guess, man. We can't get past them. So, and then the Magic. So I guess we have Paulo Boncaro winning it all uh, for the Orlando Magic. So Jabari won a championship and Paulo Boncaro won a championship, but I can't win a championship with this squad. So it is what it is, man. I'm in. A, I'm gonna end it there, though. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely drop a like if you did. I'll be back tomorrow with a Jabari Smith Rockets one, but this is Crushables. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.